I'm a first year graduate student in computer science at the University of Manchester. Um, and this year, uh, for the undergraduate course, um, they've given us all a Raspberry Pi. Uh, I just thought I'd talk about why they've done that and uh, what I thought about it. Uh, yeah. um, right, um, so when everyone turns up at the university, um, the course is taught with no assumption of knowledge because um, computing isn't widely available, uh, not in the sense that you could expect it to be a prerequisite to the course. Um, it's, uh, we, it's just taught with no assumption of any program uh, knowledge or anything like that. Um, uh, the same, the same thing with uh, Linux. Um, all the machines at the University of Manchester uh, Computer Science Department uh, are dual booted with Linux uh, and Windows 7, which is the university operating system network sort of thing. Um, but students of Computer Science are expected to use Linux for everything. I've yet to see anyone use Windows. Uh, why would you? <laughs> <laughs> Um, these are some statistics when, uh, when uh, we surveyed the students. Uh, it was 53% of students had never used Linux before, um, and only 7% when asked was, uh, considered themselves to be proficient uh, or used to the operating system. Um, so, uh, at the start of the course uh, during Freshers' Week, uh, all the labs are spent learning. Uh, learning Linux. Uh, so it's four labs, which is eight hours, and we try to teach everything we need to teach about Linux. I don't say we teach, uh, they teach. <laughs> uh, so yeah, we go over everything. So we start with a command line operating system, and then you talk about the basic Unix commands, configuring things, setting up the window manager, uh, and all that sort of thing. Um, so, uh, it costs £15,000 to give every uh, student of computer science a Raspberry Pi. Uh, that's £7,000 of Pi, uh, uh, £5,000 for the lab infrastructure, which I'll go on in a second, and for the university, £3,000 to students. Uh, and so, this is the, um, the the lab. This is what it looks like in the lab. Uh, next to each computer is a uh, setup for the Pi. So we have um, the HDMI display. Obviously, that goes to a DVI monitor. Uh, the USB hook cable, which I've been told is absolutely essential. Um, it plugs into a hub in the back of the monitor. Um, and uh, rather, the, the, the idea behind this uh, connection in the middle is that you don't have to um, Unplug every single USB thing that's plugged in, um, and apparently they've already sort of been battered to an inch of their life. These uh, connectors, so it's a good thing that we've not battered uh, through pan monitors <laughs> like that. Um, yeah, uh, micro USB power. Um, apparently, we weren't allowed to. They weren't allowed to install uh, them as normal power supplies because the building had already reached its the limit of power, so <laughs> we, couldn't, we couldn't fit any more plugs in. So we're using a, a 12 volt audio output power from the monitor, uh, and it's adapted to using an in-car power supply. Uh, it's a bit of a <laughs> bit of a, 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 a improvised rig, and um, it's it's in the spirit of Pi, I think. Uh, an Ethernet, which I was told was going to be Raspberry Pi, so that's the um, point. Right. Uh, very briefly, reasons we uh, they went with Pi was um, give students their own Linux computer. You'd be not entirely surprised to hear that uh, people don't want to install Linux onto their brand new MacBooks. Um, they're a bit reluctant. Um, allows students to experiment with Linux and such, uh, and give them full root access. Allow them to break things without much um, without much consequence. Um, and another statistic from the survey is 86% of students have never used a red card before. Um, this was one of the things that was in the, uh, the lab notes that started the. Uh, <laughs> Don't do that. Yeah, um, no, you'd think so, but underneath that in the notes, it did say this. Um, 
Uh, yeah, and, and apparently somebody did end up doing it to their pie. So, um, you know, the best learn, learn, learn by doing, learn by breaking. Um, uh, a few things that we're doing with pie now and in the future. Um, we're uh, doing a course learning web technologies, HTML, CSS, and PHP, um, and we're going to be hosting them on a local Apache server on the Pi. Uh, first new project, which is a, a web-based application, for want of a better term. Um, again, the same thing, uh, running on the Pi on the Apache server. Um, and a big thing uh, is Git is being taught uh, as part of the syllabus for the first time. Um, I think as a uh, res um, response to uh, industry comments, uh, ev all, everybody wants students to know Git, and so we've been taught it. And it's uh, obviously invaluable for, um, for moving work between the Pi and the, uh, the school computers. Um, and then, of course, the most important thing is playing Quake. Um, so at the end of the first Raspberry Pi lab, we installed IO Quake on the Pi, because that's what we should do at university. Uh, so everybody installed Quake on their Pi's, and then we saw this, um, students talking to each other, and then all of a sudden there's a, 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 a lab day going on in the middle of a university lab, and it looks a bit like that, with more blood and explosions. Uh, so there was a, a 16 player line game at the end of the lab and uh, nobody went home. <laughs> um, and of course, the, the, the most important thing is that you break everything you can. Um, so um, when people say don't interrupt and, and actually upgrade, really don't. Because I did, I ripped my pie, I didn't believe them, but it, it was true. Um, Turns out there wasn't enough uh, hard drive put on the Windows operating system in order to put the same noobs, the, uh, <laughs> noobs onto the um, onto the Pi. So I had to resort to using the DD command on my laptop. Um, and the DD command is scary because if you don't select the right drive to flash to, you just wipe your laptop. Um, so I didn't breathe for about 15 minutes, and it was worrying. But I honestly think it was it was just about the best thing that could have happened. I asked two or three lab teachers, uh, independent of each other, you know, do I really have to flash my card? Can I only get somebody else to do it? Because if I did get it wrong, it will, it will wipe my laptop. And all of them said the same thing. They said, don't select the wrong driver. So, <laughs> so yeah, uh, any questions? Sorry, we'll have to do questions after we've got to... Okay. Thank you, thank you very much.